we thought today it would be cool to show you all some of our wildflower installations that we've created for photographers. It's a great way to value add to your farm. And here is a great example of the bachelor's buttons that have reseeded. We just had a dinner on the farm, so I mow these kind of little nooks. I put tables in there and for people to eat. Yeah, they can dine among the flowers. They were really beautiful little tucked away spots. And it also makes a little tuck away spot for photographers as well. Bachelor's Buttons are one of the greatest spaces that we have. It really provides a beautiful backdrop for photographers. They can get pictures of their clients in the Bachelor's Buttons. We actually took the drone out and got lots of beautiful drone footage of me like laying in the Bachelor's Buttons. They're really dreamy, really, really gorgeous. And they're an easy one to sprout and affordable to buy in bulk. They're another one. It self-seeds too year after year and they just come up wild now. Yeah, and that's what we have definitely found with our bachelor's buttons is once they seed, they reseed prolifically. So we don't have to do as much overseeding with the bachelor's buttons, which is really nice. So good. Although they're not blooming yet, <laughs> Cosmos are another fantastic one. They're just starting to peek out. Just starting to have a trickle of a few. They're absolutely gorgeous. And the, the reason why we love Cosmo so much is because they're those romantic, like they dance in the wind. We've shown other footage of them before, but they're so beautiful. I don't know what it is also about the, the pink pastel tones. Photographers often like a really neutral background to shoot in, and this provides that perfect opportunity. Just a big field of pink Cosmos is, is super cool, yeah. super cool. We got tons of questions about what was growing here at our dinner over the weekend. Yeah, and here, let me pan over here. There's another <laughs> little nook that I mowed out for uh, guests to have dinner in the flowers. Yeah. And these were really fun because we had the little white uh, wildflowers growing amongst them, kind of popping up in random places. I don't know if we can see it here, but uh, this is fleabane. Has a horrible name. It's a horrible yeah. name. It's such a beautiful little flower, but we'll do a little close up and show y'all. I'm wondering if maybe fleas don't like it. That's Ooh. why they call it fleabane. In one of our fields, we had tons and tons of this fleabane kind of popping up. So I left it rather than prepping it for another installation. We just kind of let the flea bane come up and just, it's a big field white. It's really pretty. Yeah, we'll have to go show it actually. Yeah. So no, you don't have to intentionally plant a place. If you have flowers coming up that are native to your area that are a beautiful flower, I, I think of ironweed and Queen Anne's lace. At one point, both of those come up in our native area that we have our wild areas on the farm. Even those two things together look absolutely incredible and are a wonderful backdrop for photos as well. What we have found also is this property was horse pasture that was planted grass so it's non-native kind of invasive grass everywhere i till if i just disrupt that grass it brings up a bunch of native seeds and those sprouts so this flea bane is where tilled up that sod and grass and have tilled it up a couple of times to kind of just mm -hmm. disrupt it and native flowers and grasses and things have been coming back where we've kind of disrupted that soil so that's actually kind of cool to see it is Another plus about the flea bane is great for photographers. It's a beautiful white backdrop. So it's just another place to give our photographers to shoot while they're here. Exactly. Speaking of succession planting, this is a second planting of Cosmos. So that first one we've shown you is just starting to bloom. About another weekish, it'll be full blown, probably sometime by the end of this week. Sunflowers are a great one to succession plant. So this isn't the only sunflower field that we'll have this year. I actually have several others going and I'll plant them every few weeks for a couple of months. So we work to try and make sure once they bloom that we keep having ones because these only bloom for a week, maybe. So we want to make sure that we have sunflowers blooming all year round as much as we can. So we, we plant them every few weeks. They're about 60 days, more or less. Yeah, they're a quick one for sure. Yeah, so we'll plant till about roughly 60 days before our anticipated last frost because we want sunflowers as late as possible too. And think about this, you don't have to have a massive field of sunflowers to get really beautiful photos. You could do something as simple as a strip of sunflowers to give that beautiful backdrop for photographers. Yeah, that's what we started with when we first started kind of experimenting with these big field plantings. We just did a strip and yeah. 
got fantastic photos out of it still. In fact, that's one reason not to do a huge swath. Like you don't need acres and acres. If you do that, they're gonna bloom all at one time and be a week of, of beautifulness, but like that's all you get. So yeah. it's better to do your succession in smaller patches anyway. Yep. This is kind of an experiment. Fluff the cosmos a little bit. Right yeah, where Jen is. I, uh, this is a mixed field of sunflowers and cosmos. I just wanted to see how it would look. It's good to experiment with what we I'm have. Laugh I'm laughing because I was mowing and I'm like, hey, there's cosmos in with those sunflowers. <laughs> what the heck's going on? He's like, so, I'm experimenting. It's just a little patch. Just kind of try it out to see what we got. Right here is milkweed. I love taking the milkweed pods and floofing them around during the winter time and letting the seeds spread and we keep having milkweed like just pop up all over the farm which is fantastic and we'll leave it where it grows. Yeah our butterflies are thankful too. We actually had questions from people about milkweed seed. We will try to collect those and share those with people online when we put our seeds for sale this year. Yeah. Y'all, look at this. This is all that beautiful flea bane. I guess it's called daisy flea bane. It's beautiful. It's, yeah, look, this is absolutely insane. This is a great example of how disruption of the soil can actually be beneficial. And can't really see it, but I also see tons and tons of red clover in there. And I don't know if the bees like this or not, but I know they love that red clover. Mm -hmm. So it's been uh, super cool to see the impact of that disruption bring up a lot of natives, natives back in. Adam was actually afraid to uh, get rid of some of our red clover, but we did see the bees have moved on mostly from the red clover onto our lavender, yeah. which is interesting to see. They transition to different food sources at different times of year. Yeah, for sure. Anytime you have photographers out to your farm, it's best to have an FAQ doc. In fact, we have one linked on our website. We'll link it below so you can get access to our FAQ doc to see some of the rules and other frequently asked questions we get from photographers. It's nice to head off some of those questions before your photographer actually accesses your property. There's a lot of questions that you can avoid and avoid a lot of emails too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Which is nice. As, as many emails as you can avoid out of your life, the better. Seems to be our biggest question is, what do you have in bloom when? When are the sunflowers gonna bloom? <laughs> Our other really great spot that photographers really like to shoot in is our lavender fields. They capture some of the most incredible photos in our lavender fields, especially at sunset, which seems to be the most popular time to shoot in the lavender fields. This is a second year lavender field. It's incredibly fragrant and it's just starting to hit its peak with the beautiful lavender blooms that we have. Oh, Jen wafted the flowers a little bit and it just got a, just a big whiff of lavender. <laughs> it smells so great. So this is another really popular area to shoot. We do charge just a little bit more per hour for the lavender because it's so popular and very- It's special. It's special, and but very fleeting. We use our lavender for production to make products here on the farm and we harvest it out very quickly. So there's just a very small limited window to be able to get into the lavender fields to shoot, which is usually about two weeks. Yep. And like Jim mentioned, sunset's the best time, but we're out here at sunrise and the light's actually pretty beautiful too. It was more beautiful a few minutes ago, but... Uh, yeah, now the sun has kind of peaked up. You can see it hitting off my face. It's getting a little bit warm. It looks like today's going to be another one of the hottest days we've had so far, upper 90s. Yeah. Over 100 heat index. So yeah. eh, it's nice to get out here early in the morning and get a bunch of stuff done and do like a chill out inside, some inside work. Yeah. It always seems to be if the sun is not up or at in the evening when it goes down, those are the perfect magical hours to be able to shoot out here. The heat goes away and it's absolutely beautiful. We 
often get questions from mothers of senior graduating seniors like what outfit should I have my daughter wear <laughs> we don't like to answer those kinds of questions we leave that up to the photographer but for those of you who know the best thing you can do is to wear neutral colors when you're coming out to shoot in a flower field there are so many colors that if you wear a solid neutral color that's the best idea if you're getting your your photos taken here. And you don't want to ask me because I'd say pantsuit. Uh -huh. But usually <laughs> if you have really good photographers, they instruct their clients on what to wear and they know that as well. Stay tuned till the end and we'll talk about pricing a little bit. Yeah. The FAQ document we talked about, we do get photographers asking what we have blooming at certain times of year. And in general, we have some sort of an idea. The only kind of variability is the sunflowers. But we know in September we have dahlias blooming and our annual field looks like literally like a rainbow full of color. They can shoot photos anywhere in those fields and get absolutely incredible photos. The final thing to consider is upselling an opportunity when you have people on your farm. Something I often get asked is if I can make a bouquet for the people who are coming out and that's an added on service, but something that we often provide. In fact, we have one on Wednesday and I'm gonna make a gorgeous bouquet for her to get her photos taken in our flower fields. Also, we need to talk about zinnias as a photography opportunity. This is our wildflower zinnia patch. This one I did specifically kind of a peachy orange mix just to get, mix it up a little bit. And it's gonna be beautiful. I've been doing fairly well with keeping it weeded. I need to come in here and get some wheel hoeing done. Uh, but this is another great opportunity, these zinnias here. This is our final area that we have to show you. It's a wildflower field, a mix that Adam put together of lots of different things. There's lark's fur, bachelor's buttons, wallflower, baby's breath. Poppies, <laughs> uh, a couple other things are starting to sprout. So I tried to do a season mix so things sprouting throughout the year. So we'll see how it turns out. But this was kind of our first mix selection and it worked out really well. I so this, incredible. Yeah. This was a winter sewing and it worked. A lot of people ask what our most popular places for photographers are. We showed you the two in particular are sunflowers and lavender. I don't think you can go wrong with these huge swaths of flowers, no matter what the flower is. Yeah. They just love flowers in mass to get beautiful photos. And in fact, outside of photographers, when we have guests visit the farm, we oftentimes get a lot of, uh, I don't know, probably college age girls dressed up in their pretty floral dresses. Yeah. Guess what? <laughs> They're coming out here to get selfies in the flower fields. And that makes us really happy to see. We love that. We finally want to talk about scheduling these appointments as well as how much we charge for photographers to run our farm out. We have an online scheduler that we use so that it's all automated. We don't have to do anything. And in fact, we let photographers rebook their own appointments so that we get taken completely out of the mix on that. When we first started this, we were doing it manually and it quickly, quickly got to be too much. So it was nice to set up an online system. We opened the calendar to what date we, dates we have available. People can shop dates and pick their date that they want. And like Jen mentioned, if uh, there's a conflict, we allow rescheduling up to, I think, an hour, a couple hours before an yeah. appointment. We don't like to allow reschedules, if at all possible, only in event of an exception, like bad weather, inclement weather. And we do that because if someone misses their appointment, that's missed revenue opportunity for us. It's hard for a small business to accept a rebook because yep. somebody else could have rented that and we could have made money off of that. So we try to limit the amount of reschedules that we have. In terms of how much we charge, we charge $50 per hour. Photographers can rent as many hours as we have available early morning or mm -hmm. into the evening. If a particular date isn't on our calendar, they can contact us and we can specialty book it sometimes if we have it available. Generally, we try to block out as many of our event dates and things when we're going to have lots of people on the farm because we really want to make sure that our photographers have a unique experience all to themselves. When they rent the farm, there's nothing else going on. Typically, some 
sometimes there's a scheduling conflict. Uh, we, we want the photographer to have the farm to themselves, and that's part of the experience for the photographer. Yeah. Private, exclusive experience. Another thing I wanted to note is we eliminated photographers doing mini sessions out here. We only allow a photographer with one client. We had photographers booking the farm and they, they were booking mini sessions every seven minutes. It was absolutely insane. They were damaging the flowers and that's when I started to see kind of like a find a cigarette butt in the parking lot, which is like a pet peeve of mine. Yeah, Adam lost it. <laughs> <laughs> the final thing we want to talk about is pricing for our lavender in bloom. We had to increase our price for that. We charge $100 per hour instead of just that base 50. And that's just because the uniqueness of that experience, it's lavender, y'all. It's a field of lavender because it's very limited because we're getting it harvested out because we got we to gotta get it processed for our products. Yep. If y'all enjoyed today's video, please hit that subscribe button and give us a like while you're at it and hit the notification bell so you know when we're releasing a new video. And we'll see y'all next time. And as always, thanks for joining and happy growing.